We work so you can play. Matthew here with Jay from MiniWarGaming.com. Or I'm from MiniWarGaming.com too. And this is another in our series of the Tyranid Tactica slash reviews as mm -hmm. we go over the new codex now that we've played a bunch of games and talk about the different units and upgrades and stuff. In the last video, we talked about the HQ choices that was available in the vault. So if you missed it because you're not a vault member, of course, you can join the vault. And there's a link below to go to the next video after this one, which will also be in the vault. We'll be talking about elite slots. Yeah. And it'll, if you're not a vault member, it'll automatically say, hey, do you want a seven-day free trial? And you should say, yes, of course, and try it out because it's awesome. You get even more content from us, even more battle reports, mm -hmm. painting tutorials, behind the scenes, et cetera, et cetera. And half of the videos that are made for this tactical series are in the vault. So last one is about HQ. Today we're going to talk about troops. Yes. So there's a few options here. They, they haven't changed what options are available as troops. Nope. Uh, but they have made some small and some large... More, no, I'd say more small... I think it's the overall way that the Tyranids play that have yeah. changed the way you look at the, the, yeah. the options. Like in the, the old codex, so basically we have six options. We've got Turbagons, Warriors... Hormigons, Termagants, Ripper Swarms, and Gene Stealers. Yep. And uh, I never, I, I just couldn't get a lot of use out of Gene Stealers in the old nope. edition. So we'll see if that's changed in this one. Turbagons got used all the time, and we know that's changed. We talked about that in the HQ video. Yep. And then things like Warriors. Let's just go through all of them. Sure. Let's, first off, what are your favorite troop choices? We have six options here. If we don't go double force. I only have one that I like. What's that? Warriors. Uh, to no, me, no, I don't mean six troop choice. Awesome. I mean we have six slots. To six fill. slots. All warriors. Really? Because my logic on this new codec, uh, sorry, maybe Hormigons as well, but right now I feel like everything else in the troop slot has been nerfed to the point where the middle ground troops of the past, which were warriors, nobody took them because they were kind of the, the mediocre slot. They're now the best because everything else... Yep. Because they got worse. Everything Not got because worse. Warriors got better. No, same points cost for Warriors. They didn't change anything. Uh, all, nothing changed at all, actually. They have access to the same gear for almost the same points. Yeah, the gear hasn't really changed much for no. them. Like, you could give them Rending Claws, and those are AP5 mm -hmm. now rather than not. Um, I'd rather get Bone Swords. Yeah, AP3, yeah. insta-killing on sixes. Yeah. So would, yeah. You, would you, in your games, do you actually just take Warriors? Most of the time. Uh, no, sorry. I usually take warriors and a squad of hormigons to run up in front of them and to, bri to bri that, provide cover if I'm using venom ropes. Because you use hormigons to, s to screen the warriors, give a three-up cover save. With the venom ropes. With the venom ropes combined. Yes, because the five-up plus yeah. the two. And that's great because they only have a four-up armor save. So going from a four-up armor save to a three-up cover is a huge increase. It's a huge increase and also a lot of things are going to ignore a four, uh, four armor. So it yeah. actually most of the time gives you a save mm -hmm. and a good one at that. Um, even the five up was always nice, but now it's like a three up with Venomthropes. These guys, um, I played them against Orcs the other day, and a squad of Hormigons was in front of them, so it gave them a three up cover. Luda's got uh, 45 shots against them and only killed one in the end. So one lone t uh, warrior died as a result, when normally they wouldn't even get a save. Now what do you think about the whole problem? Like, this, was, this was the update in the last Codex where we lost Eternal Warrior, yeah. which I think is okay, by the way. Uh, so now they are toughness, they're still toughness four. They've been up to three wounds from two, this is two codexes ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, but they can be insta-killed with strength eight. So how has your experience has been with that? Do they get insta-killed all the time? Because you think they would. Sometimes. I've, I've lost two due, due to instant kill. But luckily combined with the cover, they're okay. As long as they, they have nothing that ignores the cover, you're in okay Yeah, position. strength eight ignoring cover. Right? Because you're going to pass two-thirds of your saves. But once sure. you fail one... <clears throat> They go up and I found the same thing, that as much as you would see that as a major vulnerability, that it doesn't actually come up very often. Most of the time with their high strength weapons, they're aiming at something else. Yeah, like the Hive Tyrants and the Carnifexes and all the other monstrous creatures they yeah. can throw at them. And people kind of forget about, when you, I, you do, I, every time I, I start my game, I do instruct my, I tell my opponent what I'm bringing, what happens. But they kind of forget how things stack with Shrouded. So if you're shooting through a squad of Hormigons and they're aiming at the Warriors, they think it's an easy kill, and all of a sudden I say, well, three actually, it's a cover. Three cover, and they go, what? So, <laughs> and you told them, so it's I not didn't like tell you them. to feel bad. No, I don't, exactly. They are, that's the thing. To me, they're now the, the best troops, especially now that Synapse has become such a major factor. They're their own Synapse creature. You never have to worry about running them outside of the Synapse. That's right, because they are Synapse. Um, and they're pretty much the best troop choice in close combat. Yeah. 
I yeah. would say that too. Now they and, are expensive. Yes. A close combat warrior is running you at 50 to 60 points a piece. Yes. Because they're 30 points base, you're adding like 15 points for the bone swords. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do what you do and, and keep the weapon, then that's fine. But the, you, yep. lose the, you lose the attack by keeping the shooting weapon, mm -hmm. but gain so many more attacks yes. on your. Because you're going to spend two or three rounds just Shooting. getting to your opponent. Yeah. So when you add up all those extra shots, then it really does add up. I'm actually really excited because. I, until until I was talking, we had the series. Yep. I had never thought to actually kit them out as both shooting and close combat. Oh. I'd always, in my mind, I either make the warriors shooting warriors, mm -hmm. or I make them close combat. And really, the only disadvantage in making them both is if you take Despiters, they're five points yep. more expensive, which is not much, no. and you lose one attack mm -hmm. because you're no longer having two close combat yes. weapons. And that, to me, is not a disadvantage. No. You're getting, especially with Despiters, three strength, five shots each. And especially when combined with the Tyranid Prime, they're now hitting on threes. Uh, it's supposed to their weapon skill and ballistic skill. Oh, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm going to be trying this in my mm -hmm. next battle reports. Sorry, Steve. Necron Tyranid campaign, you're going to be seeing more warriors. Now, my, by the time you see this video, I'm sure that I have already played those games. Mm -hmm. they maybe even have been posted because these aren't going to all go out at the same yeah. time. But uh, that's going to be interesting because I, I do want to exper <coughs> experiment more with that and see and see how that is. It's a great middle to short range threat. So, so just as a recap, we talked about this in a previous video, but how Jay likes to kit them out is bone swords, devourers, adrenal glands, and toxin sacs. Oh, right? no, I don't usually add adrenal glands. Just okay, bone no, swords, toxin sacs, and, and uh, devourers. Devourers. So devourers is free. Devourers are free, yeah. See, uh, what I would do is bone swords, death spitters, adrenal glands, mm -hmm. and toxin sacs. Because just getting the fleet... Yeah. And strength five on the charge, that can make a huge difference. True. Mm -hmm. But just the fleet. Just yeah. for the fleet. Just so they can keep up with the running when you don't get to shoot. Yeah, and adrenal glands, or toxic sex are the cheapest ones, that's why I run it with it. three points a model. Is yeah. The, you know. And flesh hooks are the one thing I've always debated on. I've not run them yet, but I've, they've only been at disadvantage one time. Yeah, the flesh hooks give them basically like frag grenades. It yeah. allows them to charge through cover and not get dropped down to initiative one. And yeah, I agree. It's hard. It's hard to decide to give them. I I, I rarely give anything flesh hooks. And the only thing that like lictors will have them automatically. Yeah. And so you just kind of run at them that way. So okay, second to warriors, you said hormigons. Right? Hormigons. So obviously we, we talked about the hormigons got a bit of, of a nerf. Yes. Uh, the 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 main thing of their nerf is the silent talents no longer allow them to reroll ones. That is really all that's changed. That and their uh, their uh, their run. instinct. Oh, and the instinctive behavior yeah. is now really crappy, yeah, but everybody got that disadvantage. Yeah. yeah, the fact that you can't just leave them out of synapse and they'll actually be better, now they actually... Destroy have, themselves. They'll destroy themselves. Yeah, Hormagons out of synapse, you're asking to lose the game. Now, they, they, they have gotten um, a better with their running. Yes. They've gone from 3d6, take the best mm. one, to d6 plus 3, yeah. but they have fleet, so you get to re-roll that. Like, it, I'm, yeah. I was rolling on average 7 pluses for, mm -hmm. my, for my runs. Yeah, definitely. So how, how do, you, do you feel that that kind of brings the balance back up at all? Yes and no. Uh, yes, it gets them across faster. I do find that if I bring 30 of them, it's me moving up 30, then they shoot 10 down, and then I move up the remaining 20. It's just like Space Invaders kind of. My biggest problem, though, is they are fast, but you got to keep them close to the synapse. Yes. And I use them as the front screen, so if I, sometimes I don't run them because I know if they run, next turn they will be out of synapse. And, and that's uh, why you want fleet yeah. on your warriors, is what I'm trying yeah. to say, because they're going to be running 7 to 9 inches. Yeah. Typically, like you can still roll a one and re-roll mm -hmm. a one, or roll a three and re-roll a one, or whatever. But typically, they're going to be they're going they're minimum four inch run. Yeah. And so, if you don't have fleet on your warriors, then you could easily roll a one two runs and all that. Kind of that stuff. being said, I can easily just conga line them back and. and yeah, that's what I've had to do. Yeah. But then, when you get into close combat, half of them are not mm -hmm. able to get there. Exactly. So I do agree. Hormigons have taken a hit. They were always my favorite troop choice before mm -hmm. this edition. Besides turbogons, yeah. obviously, they were awesome before. Um, so what do you give? Do you give them adrenal glands, toxin sacs, or both? Toxin sacs. Toxin sacs. Again, my Never adrenal things, glands? No, uh, I don't give adrenal glands only because I really don't run them at vehicles very often. Um, but toxin sacs are good against anything. Yes. Well, you except know, vehicles. Except for vehicles, right? But vehicles, you're, you're going, you're, hopefully for vehicles, they're only good against, you know, rear armor 10 or less vehicles. Yes. So you're out of luck if you're against Necrons. But uh, toxin sacs on them are good against pretty much anything. You can run them against any monstrous creature. Uh, right now, in, in the metagame, there's a lot of, of uh, Wraith Knights, yeah. or and Wraith Riptides. Lords, Riptides. 
And uh, even if you're going against another Tyranid army, the odds are they're going to be high toughness. So they're, you know, Toxin Sacks are going against anything. You can, yeah. you can DACA, like I, I was against Orcs the other day, uh, not bikers, and Hormagons did a bunch of wounds because four plus, you know. That yeah, being you typically said, want to choose yeah. one or the other, either yeah. Adrenal Glands or Toxin Sacks. I agree, Toxin yeah. Sacks is usually the, the one I would choose. Uh, it, the only exception to that if, is if I know my opponent and I know there's going to be a lot of armor 10. Mm-hmm. Um, then that would change, like if I'm like, okay, he's going to be bringing lots of transports, so they're all going to be armor 10 on the back, mm-hmm. then I might change my mind and give them adrenal glands. Because he's most likely not going to be able to charge me, so if I get the charge off, then they're going to be that higher strength anyways, yeah. which usually helps you deal with the, the enemy. And then I can glance him to death if I really need to, because mm-hmm. three attacks each on the charge, you get even 10 of them out of vehicle, and you can really do some damage there. But I agree, toxin sex normally. Um, but that's really all your options. If you give them both, they're really strong, but then they're twice as, uh, yeah, as expensive. Ten points each. And I know they did get slightly cheaper, but the way I run them in Toxin Sacks, they save the same cost. Yeah, they, to- they basically made them one point cheaper and made the Toxin mm-hmm. Sacks one point more, yeah. and the Adrenal Glands the same cost. Because Adrenal Glands give Furious Charge and Fleet, but they already have Fleet. Yes. So they basically made Adrenal Gland Hormagons slightly cheaper. Toxin Sacks, the same way. Same so um, is there a place... In, in this for the other ones. Mm-hmm. Like Termagons we talked about before. Goths. But what about Termagons? Yes. Uh, again, a screen for the Hormagons. <laughs> so you get Termagons, <laughs> screening Hormagons, screening Warriors. Well, they don't even have to. If the, the Gons can be the screen. You know, they just they can provide the screen. But other than that, other than but the screen... But slow, they'll slow down the Hormagons, though. It, that's the only problem, yeah. So that's why I like the Hormagons in front. Because uh, of, when you deploy, it's going to be like Termagons and Hormagons. The Hormagons are going to start like three inches A giant back. squad of Gons... Or okay is a camper on an objective, but you gotta keep them synapse because the second they follow synapse, they run they fall away. Back. Yeah. And that's scary. Losing thirty guys backwards. Problem well, is, you don't have to bring thirty though. Well, if you want to take like a turbogon or something. If you bring a turbogon. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you want to bring a turbogon as a troop choice, that's why you bring yeah. turbogons in thirty man squads. Gons are okay. Uh, there's a combination. You could give them a uh, better gun. You know, maybe spine fists if you're trying to go for short range. Uh, like, no, sorry, slightly lower toughness. You know. Yeah, we did, I did the math on it, and I sit and talk this morning, actually. Mm-hmm. And spine fists are better if you're up against toughness three and four. Yeah. Toughness four, they make no difference. And toughness three, they're slightly better. And five up, you're, yeah, exactly. They make it worse when it's strength five. Or but uh, five. guns are okay. I, I've tried them out, but they, the thing is, they're not amazing shooters. They're you know, not good at all in close combat. Yeah. And really, you won't have things blocking them to give them a cover save, unless they're in cover. You know, they won't be, they, nothing to screen them. Yeah, now... Basically, what I find is where I see Termagons is when there's Turbagons involved. Mm-hmm. Not just like to bring a Turbagon as a troop choice, but even if a Turbagon is a HQ, HQ then you are going to see Termagons. Yeah. I, I, I have yet in the new edition to bring Termagons for any other purpose. Neither have I. Uh, there's, and the problem is there's no real synergy anymore between Turbagons and Termagons. No, they just give them counter strike or counter attack, which is like, wow, okay. So it, they pass yeah. their really crummy leadership. And. Then they get an extra attack. Hitting on fours, wounding on at worst, uh, at least like six. fives. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I agree. Termagants seem to like they're super cheap now. They're four yeah. points a piece. So maybe the, uh, where their advantage will be is if you decide you don't want to bring hormagants, mm-hmm. bring termagants because yeah. a hormagant you're typically giving toxin sacks to. That's eight points. Yep. So you can get... bring two termagants. So if you're purely thinking a screening unit, mm-hmm. that is where I think termagants would come in. Yep. Because then when you set up your line. You set up a thin line of termagants along the front with the warriors right behind them. And then you just kind of move up and have like term- termagants kind of surrounding them. So as the termagants die, the, the next ones can kind of run forward and cover the warriors. Yeah. Uh, and if they choose not to fire at the termagants, then well, they could actually do some damage. Yeah. They could tie some. And, and I've seen them tie up like really high strength things um, because you know, there's just so many of them. So they kind of, they're, they're good shield. Mm-hmm. And they're so cheap, four points a piece, like seriously. Yeah. You bring a full, like a squad of 30, which is a big block of them. That's 120 points. Yeah. I, I've ran with a squad of 30. And the only problem yeah. is with that is, it, again, the, the space invaders thing. It's just you feel like you're, you take all this time to put them on the 30 you know, models on the table just to remove front line, move them up front line, move yeah. them up front line. And it's just, it, 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 it could be competitive if you ran, you know, 30 times 5. Yeah, or six. Or six, right? But for 600 points, you can get 150 
guns on the table, but you're going to be moving 150 guns yeah. that will do nothing. Like Not like Orc Boys, where you can move them up, get into assault, have fun, or shoot, lay back and shoot. Uh, guns are pretty much in every way inferior to Orc Boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they always have been. Yeah. They're cheaper, though, but still. It, I think points for points, they are still inferior. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're tough. Um, now, going on to the gene sealers. No? It's a, it's a problem is with 6th edition, it's a shooting. It's all about shooting. And Gene Steelers, they can't hold up. They can't assault anymore. The turn they, uh, that was the big you know. nerf in 6th edition, is they would out, they used to be, you outflank Gene Steelers yep. and they would assault. And that was their big thing. That was their one trick kind of idea. In 4th edition, they were awesome. Oh, yeah. actually, you could just bring them as troop choices and they could hold their own. They used to bounce between combats. And yeah, and give them feeder tendrils so they have preferred enemy. Mm -hmm. All that. But now, the problem is like they have infiltrate. But if you infiltrate them, if you have first turn, they can't attack. No. Nope. So that doesn't matter anyways. And then they're up forward and they get shot to death. And they're out of the range of the Venomthropes, who could actually provide them with better cover. Yep. And if it's night fighting, they're closer and so they're not getting shrouded because they're too close. They have five plus armor saves, so they're going to get eaten to death by basically Toughness anything. four, so nothing special there. And not even grenades. In close combat, they are awesome. But they don't even have grenades. Yeah. So if anything's in cover, you're going last. Yeah. No, I agree. And they're 14 points a piece. They're not incredibly expensive. You could take three and a half guns. <laughs> I, would, I would be interested to try them out without infiltrating them. So actually mm -hmm. keep them with the bulk of the army and have them move forward. Because uh, in, in the old, the last edition, I, a few of my combos was Termagants Gene Stealers. So I'd use mm -hmm. the Termagants as a shield for the Gene yep. Stealers. Or I'd do Termagants, Hormagants, or Turvagons, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the Gene Stealers would actually have some, some use. But uh, this is just becoming less and less so. Now, I'm still going to try them, though. Yeah. I and I've, been, I've been playing them in, the, this, in our campaign mm -hmm. because they're the vanguard, right? They're the first thing there. But um, it's just, yeah. Maybe there's some little tricks, like maybe attaching a Tyranid Prime to them. To I don't know. It might be an interesting way of delivering a Broodlord and a Prime. Yeah, because the Broodlord is great, and he's got the psychic power. I think there's potential there. I just we had. I think we fully have explored it. Yeah, it's there's just, there's so many things that are going on with them, that I feel in our experience they don't seem to be good. But I will be honest, we haven't used them a lot because we no. haven't really thought they'd be good. No, that's it, it's kind of a yeah exactly. It's it's a positive feedback loop. We don't think they're good, so we're not using them. So we have nothing good to say about them. Exactly. So I am going to experiment with mm. them. Because they are still pretty awesome in close combat if they get there. If they get there, and if your opponent is not in cover. Yeah, because a high initiative, high weapon skill, rending, strength mm -hmm. four base. You can give them, easily give them yeah. toxin sacks for very little points compared to how much they cost. And so they'll be rerolling to hit, on, or rerolling to moon on the ruin on the most time. The Brew Lord is a beast. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and he's a character, so there's challenges involved there, yep. which is nice. And sometimes, sometimes it's bad. So yeah, it's tough. So that leads us to the last one, the Ripper Swarms. Ripper Swarms. Did we talk, did we discuss the Turvagon as a troop? Yeah, we briefly. Basically, yeah. It's like, Ripper Swarms. Same as HQ. Ah. Ripper Swarms. Take them for fun. We, uh, you want to know something now? I have found a way to make them interesting. Spine Fists? Spine Fists yeah. and Deep Strike. Because <laughs> you can upgrade them to have Deep Strike, two points apiece. Mm -hmm. So that's from 13 to 15. Then you give them Spine Fists, so that's up to 19 points. Yep. And, I'm sorry, my nose is itchy. I'm not, I'm not picking it. Honest, I'm scratching on the outside. See, tell him I'm scratching on the outside. He's, he's scratching at the outside. <laughs> not you. <laughs> they have four attacks. See, the way Spine Fist works is they have a number of attacks equal to um, your attack profile. Mm -hmm. And Ripper Swarms have four attacks. Yep. And it's, it's a funny thought that they'll all have a spine fist. And there's even mo there's even Ripper Swarm yeah. models with the spine fist, and they look hilarious. And uh, and then you deep strike them. Now they can mishap, mm -hmm. and they're large. They're very large bases yeah. compared. So you know it's going to be hard, but it's, it's surprising how much damage they can do when you get a group of let's say six of them. Because you have you have what minimum three, and you can add, you can make it up to nine. They're three to nine. Let's say you have six. Mm -hmm. It's not that expensive. Nope. It really isn't. 15, 19, So that's like less than one hundred twenty points. Yeah. One hundred and fourteen points. And they're deep striking, and when they come in, they fire 24 
shots. Yep. Now, they only yeah. does a skill two. So hitting on five is reroll. But they're twin linked. Yeah. So that basically makes them like a four plus. Yeah, an orc. Like an orc, but with the twin linked. Um, and so, and then they're stri- they're only strength three, but that's it's a it's a surprising number of shots, and I find that. And then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of ripper swarms near you, who um, you know, sure they have instinctive behavior feed, so you better make sure they're supported, otherwise mm-hmm. they're going to eat each other. Now, mind you, they don't eat each other as fast because they're multi wound. Yeah, but they are a good tar pit unit. If your opponent wants to dedicate insta killing to them, yeah. you know, so be it. But that means he's not dedicating mm-hmm. that insta killing to your your other stuff. So I find that a combination of the fact that they can have that surprising firepower, plus the fact that when they get into close combat, if they're fearless, they take forever to kill. That's true. That they actually have their use. Mm-hmm. And, and they're kind of fun to bring. So I would recommend them. But competitively, warriors and hormigons. Yeah. Warriors more, and then hormigons to back them up. And that's what I've been running to, actually. That's I've, been, what I've been bringing warriors and hormigons. Occasionally I've been trying out other stuff. I've, yeah. Oh, yeah. In one game, I tried all four. Uh, so Hormigons, Tyranid, war, uh, sorry, Warriors, Warriors. Hormigons, Termigons, and Termigons. I was disappointed with the Termigons and the Termigons. Yep. Yeah, but I had the same experience. And my Termigon actually spawned five turns in a row. Oh, nice. And a good amount. Like, he died before he stopped oh, spawning. Mine corked turn two. Yes, but when he died, he killed <sighs> a lot of them. But still, he, he spawned that many, and he spawned really well. And I still was disappointed with him. That tells you it's, something. It's really when you get yeah. like a hundred extra gaunts for free, or I think it was like sixty. He oh, spawned. Wow. Like yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. When you get that many extra gaunts for free, and you're still disappointed, there's something wrong with the unit. I was spawning them wrong. I was spawning them at the beginning because yes. I had read it wrong, because it was my first time using them, and so that could have affected it a little bit how I thought about them. But still. And it is unfortunate because now the new rules are just to save you guys a few minutes of time. You only roll one set of d of three d six, and it and applied all, all of them. But, but the that's one fine. time I rolled, I rolled what I rolled ten. No, on three d six, I rolled uh, thirteen, and it was like instantly that does all, kill all your thirteen thirty. Oh, yeah. But you could have also rolled four, right? Yeah. Rolling it against all of them or rolling individually is going to be the same yeah. statistics. It's the fact that it's twelve inches instead of six. That's yeah, the that's difference. huge. Okay, well, that's our review of the troop at uh, the troop slot mm-hmm. in the Tyranid Codex. Um, definitely, we're liking it. It's just that it seems that the troops is where the warriors are cool. I really like yeah. them. I like them now. I, I'm really enjoying them. And but the troop choices seems to be the least interesting. Yeah, that, that, that and the fast attack. That and fast attack. Yeah. Well, fast attack have some pretty cool things. We yeah. just haven't tried them because yeah. we don't have the models for them. Because I think flying warriors would be fun. So stay tuned, vault members. Of course, the next video will be in the vault. It'll be about the elite slot. So that's the very coveted slot, like which, oh, cow, that's actually one of the most, between elite and, and heavy support, you're, you're having your mm-hmm. biggest conundrums of what to bring. I almost always max out those two, yeah. those two slots. So that'll be at the link below. Go ahead and click it. And if you're not a vault member, you can still click it and you can get a free seven day trial so that you can watch it instantly as well as all the previous ones and all the other stuff that's in there. There's like 2,000 videos in there right now, I think. It's pretty, pretty good. Some of them are older. We put out tons of new videos every yeah. day. And we just crossed 3,000 YouTube videos. Wow. I don't know they've all gone up. We, we've put up our 3,000th yesterday. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyways, stay tuned for more. We're going to talk about the elites next. This is Matthew and Jay. Happy Wargaming.